It's a fasting day, so I have water to show you. That's yeah, exciting, have, right? Have, hey, Deborah. Good I morning. Nothing. Good morning, Deborah. So, and it's going to be a tough fasting day because yesterday I finished eating my second meal at like 3:30, I think, and then I didn't eat anything in the after in the in the evening. I just ended up not. I was upstairs, you know, doing different things, working, and I just never came down and got right. anything to eat. And we have a conference call right around the time we that's normally eat. That's the problem. Eat. We have a conference so call. So that's going to extend our fasting. So We're I'm, doing a full 24 today And then some probably because, yeah, yeah we, we probably won't get done with that call till 5 and then right. it'll be like, okay, you need to eat now. Yeah, so, so then it'll be like, <laughs> Yeah, I already feel like I want to eat all the things. Right. So, but we'll make it. It'll be oh, fine. I'm sure. But today I wanted to talk to you about how often should you weigh yourself. Um, it seems like there's a lot out there about um, when you should and when you shouldn't and what it, what it means and all these different things. And I see a lot in the groups I'm in, I see a lot of conversation and a lot of people whose emotional well-being is tied to what the scale says when they step on it. So let's talk a little bit first about kind of the different ways you can go about it. And then let's talk about the psychological aspects of weight and, and how it affects your day. So there's some conventional wisdom that says you shouldn't weigh yourself more than once a week because weight varies and it doesn't matter and blah, blah, and whatever. I mean, my weight fluctuates is five pounds almost from the time I, I go to bed to the time I wake up in the morning. Right. We, you guys know we weigh ourselves morning and night, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But the concern I have with people who only weigh themselves once a week is they aren't aware, I guess, of the fluctuations, the normal fluctuations of body weight and how one pound in one direction or the other over the course of the week is nothing. That could be you ate a bigger meal the night, night before. Or you or, ate one less meal. Or yeah. you ate one less meal or you drank more water or like yeah. one pound over the course of seven days is neither here nor there. It's the trend that matters. And if you don't know how your body fluctuates weight, it's a lot more challenging. So for example, last week on my birthday, which was on Tuesday, was that, is that right, Tuesday? Tuesday. Um, we went out for sushi and because of the sodium and the rice and whatever, I gained two, like three pounds basically overnight. Mm -hmm. And usually that goes away in about three days. It didn't, my weight didn't actually get back to where it was prior to eating sushi until yesterday. Right. So it took me more than a week for my body to kind of do whatever it needed to do with that sodium. I don't know what the deal was with that, but if I hadn't been weighing myself consistently, and maybe I weighed myself before I had sushi and had this number, and then I waited a week and weighed myself again, I was still carrying that sushi weight, and mm -hmm. I would have been like, what happened? Right. But because, Which is water. And by the way, it's vegetarian sushi. Right, so it's, yes, it's, veg it's, it's veggies. It's, no, it's not no fish. No products or anything like that. It's basically a delivery method for soy sauce. Right. That's wasabi. what we actually like, the wasabi <laughs> and the soy sauce. That's, our thing. That's what it is. Which is the high sodium part, which is why you, may, you, you will retain that water. Right. So if I hadn't, if I didn't know about my body's weight fluctuation and kind of the fact that I gained that three pounds basically overnight, which is not fat, so you don't gain three pounds of fat overnight, um, I would have been freaked out. Like, oh my goodness, I gained all this weight. What did I do in the last week? And I didn't do anything except take in too much sodium. Mm -hmm. So that's one point where you kind of need to know how your body fluctuates. And I feel like a lot of people don't know what their body does on a daily basis or even on a consistent basis if they don't weigh themselves um, consistently. Mm -hmm. Now that said, when I was in my 20s and I was playing competitive volleyball and I didn't even have a scale, I never weighed myself. And, st and it, it, it's actually funny when I think back to it that every time I ended up getting on a scale, I weighed, I weighed 126 pounds. Like I don't even know why, like every single time. Certainly my weight wasn't that stable even in my 20s, but that's the way it was. So while I think that I understand the logic of only weigh yourself once a week because it's the trend that matters, A, if you're not, follow, if you're not tracking the trend but in some kind of spreadsheet so you can actually see what your weight is doing consistently, um, I don't know if that's helpful. And B, if you don't know how your body fluctuates weight, then you don't really know what's going on with your weight week to week if you only weigh your weigh in once a week. I mean, I think that if you if you really want to know what your weight and what your body's doing, over, you know, as a as a general rule, doing weighing yourself, you know, once a week over a month or two months, and then looking at the trend will give you a much better idea of what your body's actually doing. Because, like Robin said, one meal could make a big difference. One you know, um, I don't know, one beverage you drink could make a big difference. You know, whether or not you've had wine one week and not another. 
and it's not an actual true measurement of what your body's doing. I feel like more than once a week is, is definitely, I mean, for me with my clients, I want them to weigh themselves every day. And then if they have psychological trauma with that, like the, the challenge of it, then we work on that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the way to uh, address a psychological issue with a number on a scale affecting you emotionally is to avoid the number on the scale. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the right answer. I think the answer is, if, you're, if the number on the scale, whether it goes up or down, uh, tells you, like I, I had a client who s said when she got on the scale and her weight was down, that was her excuse to celebrate and she would eat junk. And then if she got on the scale and her weight was up, then it made her depressed and then she would get depressed and eat junk. And I'm like, okay, so regardless of what the scale says, says, you're, says eating you're junk. eating junk. Yeah. This is not the scale's fault. Let's, let's work on the internal stuff that's causing right. the problem. So that's what I think the bigger issue is with people who um, you know avoid the scale or don't weigh themselves consistently and don't know how their bodies fluctuate weight is they have psychological and emotional um, connections to those numbers and where they are. And so I think that's the issue that needs to be addressed rather than saying, oh, I, you know, I don't weigh myself because it stresses mm -hmm. me out. And there are diet groups out there that actually use the scale as a way to manipulate people to stay within a system. Yes. You know, um, and so, so keep that in mind. I mean, and I'm not going to mention any of them. You, uh, I'm sure I don't have to. You're all probably familiar with them. But that's, their, that's the purpose and that's what they teach. Get them to this place, weigh them, and then build momentum off of that number right and, and that's how you keep them coming back and whatever and buying and let, let's talk a little bit about um, making sure you get a, a consistent weight the first thing is make sure you're weighing yourself on the same scale all of the time very important um, I, it's funny because I you know I'll weigh myself here when I get out of bed in the morning and then I'll weigh myself fully clothed with shoes on at the gym and the scale of the gym says I weigh less yeah which is that's hysterical yes. to me yeah. Um, and I don't care, like the number doesn't matter, which one's actually right doesn't matter much no. to me. It's just funny to me that they're different, right. you know, right. obviously very different. But just pick one that is your go-to. This is what I'm going to base everything about my body on this particular scale. And then leave your scale stable. Don't mm. move it around because every time you move a scale, it can play with the calibration of it, the floor you have it setting on, whatever. Right. And don't make your scale, your go-to scale, the one at the health club or the one at the gym because they are not calibrated enough. And because so many different people use them, bump into them, kick them around, whatever, they will go out of sync a lot. I know I had a gym. I was recalibrating my scale daily, and it was still going out of whack. So don't use that as your go-to method for weighing yourself. Do you think even the, um, the electronic ones now that I, are digital still might have those dramas? Honestly, I don't have enough knowledge about that. But if it's a, and, and you'd have to look with the manufacturer. But if it can be affected by being bumped into... Um, stepped on and off stepped of, on. Right. but I mean it could be something as simple as they have pads on them and the pads starting to wear out so now it's not calibrated because it was calibrated for when the pad was good right. it's just all these things that you can't really account for um, that, but if it's, if it's a scale in your home then the accuracy of the scale whether it's telling you exactly what you weigh is not relevant that's not the point if, yeah. you know you can use numbers 1 through 10 if it says you weigh 8 and you want to weigh 7.9 then you have that reference right. and you can use that scale as a reference Right. And so I think that that's important is, you know, pick the same scale, don't move it around, don't, don't bump it. And we do bump ours, but mm -hmm. I mean, it just happens, but try as much as you can for your, your scale to be stable so that you know. And then I would recommend, you know, weigh yourself at the same time every day, whether it's, you know, in the morning when you first get out of bed. And if the number matters to you when you first get out of bed in the morning, um, after you use the bathroom is when you're going to probably weigh Maybe. the least, mm -hmm. unless you're fasting. Sometimes on fasting days, I weigh less in the evening than I did in, in the morning. Um, but it, it's just more about being, you know, consistent and stable about it. I, I like to do morning and night because I like to see the fluctuation and I like to graph it and I have, you know, Excel spreadsheets and because I'm weird that way. I'm a geek. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I am saying that I think more than once a week is relevant because that way you can at least know the fluctuations to your body. So for me and for my clients, I recommend once a day, um, twice a day if it makes you happy, whatever. And then um, if you have psychological issues or emotional issues with the number, whether it goes up or down, then address those mm -hmm. um, and, and, and deal with that issue. And then the other thing that people ask me when we talk about weight, and I'll touch on this really briefly because we have a little bit of time here, is you know how much should I weigh? And I see this conversation a lot in groups. Well, how much should I weigh? And people are asking other people, hey, yeah. you're the same age well, and the same height as me. How much should, you, how much should I weigh? Right. And the problem is it's always less than people want to admit. 
Well, and that's the problem is that the numbers that people come up with, I don't know where they come up with them. Like they, they like make them up, I think. And so I've started asking people, well, do you want a health and wellness calculation based on, you know, science or are you just looking to pull something out of a hat? That's a number that you feel like the thing that people say is, well, what's attainable? Well, what's attainable is not healthy. Right. And what's attainable is an individual thing. It's not right. a, you know, absolutely a, a what you should weigh. So there are, there are some different um, calculators out there. You know, I've told you I'm not a huge fan of BMI because it doesn't take a lot of different things into consideration. Um, and there's a huge range in BMI that says healthy, and I think that range is too big. I think the range should be substantially smaller um, than it is. I think that a BMI of you know 22.5 is probably the top end of healthy, although mm. the government says 24 is fine. Actually, I thought... Yeah, okay. I think 24.9. I thought then, Europe was 24, but I thought the U.S. is like 28. Like they no, actually, I don't think it's that no? high. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. We'll have, so. we'll have to look that up. And get but I do feel like the range for healthy and BMI mm -hmm. is too big. I think that people should, for health and wellness reasons and for longevity reasons, way less than that. Um, there's also, and I have these, so if you want to, you know, give me a give me a call, set up an appointment, I'm happy to run them for you for your age and, and your height and all of that stuff. But there's different calculators out there that, like, there's one that's done by a life insurance company that they have figured out who lives the longest. And for them, it would matter, right? Yeah. They're a health insurance company. The longer you live, the more they have to pay out. So they uh, they want you to, uh, you know, they want to know. And so I like their calculator. There's a, a couple of different ones by some different um, doctors out there. And so I like to use all of them and then look at them. And I will tell you, I'm going to make, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. When you reach your ideal weight based on health and longevity calculations, which is where I am, people are going to tell you you're too thin. Mm -hmm. And that's because most humans, about 85% of humans are overweight. So people have no idea what a healthy weight human Just go out like. and look outside. Go to a mall. Go to, go shopping. Do whatever. And look at the general population. We yeah. are an obese nation. We yeah. just are. So it's a matter of, you know, you have to be emotionally and mentally able to say, this is where it's healthy. And whether other people mm -hmm. think that, that I look healthy or not is, right. is not the point. And as we say, it's not only about health. Being at a healthy weight is going to make you healthy as far as not needing medications and not getting diseases. But it's also going to help you in sense of, you know, bones not hurting, back not hurting. I mean, these, these things, you're putting extra weight on a skeletal structure that's not meant to carry that much weight. It's true. And so what happens is you wear it out. You, you know, not to mention you're leaching calcium out of the bones by eating animal products and making a lot of tangent. No, no don't go there. We don't have time for that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the basic bottom line I wanted to share with you about weight um, and when to weigh yourself and what it means and dealing with the emotional and psychological issues that the number means to you or your clothes size means to you rather than um, avoiding it by avoiding the scale or, or avoiding clothing sizes or you know all that stuff. That's a, a mental and emotional thing that needs to be addressed, not avoided. Do you have anything you want to add? I think that's Without going on a tangent? No, because I'll go on a tangent. Okay. I have a tangent. Anybody want a tangent? No, no? tangents. Okay, no tangent today. All right. Our website is rnrjourney.com. You can go over there and become a member. You can book sessions with us directly. You can get book a session for Russ to build you a um, workout plan. Mm -hmm. A lot of different options on there. And our um, webinar is at howtofeedahuman.com. Please make sure that you like and share and let other people know about us. Because we don't do these for our health. We do them for yours. I think that's all I've got for now. Oh. Let's oh, get about our getting work. Into the groove. We have work to do. Okay, so with that, we will say eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.